Hi, thanks for joining me. First and foremost, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jamin. I am a third year undergraduate mathematician at the University of Oxford. Normally there's a white wall in the background with a theorem written on it or a problem written on it. And that's what my standard video is, me solving that problem or proving that theorem. But today I thought I'd do something a little different and just talk about what it's like to do maths at the University of Oxford because there aren't I think there's maybe one video on uh, YouTube, and it's quite an old video, where someone talks about maths at Oxford, so I thought maybe I'd revamp it. And also I thought there aren't many videos about maths at Oxford. There are lots of videos about other subjects at Oxford, but not many about maths. So if you want to see more of this, let me know. Maybe it's a hole in the market, or maybe there's a reason there are no videos about it. Uh, so let me know if you enjoy this sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to stop waffling. Uh, let's get stuck in. <laughs> Okay, so I'll leave timestamps in the description below if you want to jump to certain sections of this video. But I'm just going to get stuck in with the whole application process. If you do want to apply to Oxford to do maths, you have to apply, or in fact, if you want to apply to do any course at any university within the UK, you have to apply through this system called UCAS. So you apply to, through UCAS and they sort of distribute your applications to the courses and universities within the UK. I won't, I won't talk much about UCAS, but for maths at Oxford, or in fact maths at Cambridge, or any subject at Oxford or Cambridge, you have to apply early. So that's around the 15th of October, whereas the normal deadline is around, uh, I think, the 10th of January, somewhere around then. Um, but yeah, you have to apply by around the 15th of October for Oxford or Cambridge, but in particular Oxford Maths. Once you've applied to do maths at Oxford, then a few weeks later you'll have to sit what's called the MAT. So that stands for the Maths Admissions Test or the Mathematics in Admissions Test. This is a two and a half hour long test uh, where you basically just solve uh, five different maths problems where the first one is kind of ten sub questions. Uh, but yeah, I'll leave a link in the description below to the MAT website. and You can find all details about the MAT and past papers and things like that and how to apply and how to prepare and all those sorts of things. Um, maybe I'll make a video in which I talk a bit more about the mat. Black pen, red pen suggested I did, so perhaps I will, perhaps I will. Anyway, once you've done the mat, uh, a couple of weeks later you find out how you did. Or you don't get a score, but you find out if you make it through to the next round of the whole maths application process for Oxford. So that is the interviews, the sort of famous Oxbridge interviews. So you apply to do maths, you, you apply through UCAS, you then sit the mat, and then once you've done the mat, a few weeks later, you'll find out whether or not you've made it to the interview stage. So the interviews will be sort of around the first or second week of December, and they're kind of stressful, but they shouldn't be stressful, but you're very nervous. This is like the thing, you know, very few people make it to the interview, so you've already done really, really well to get there. But this is like essentially the last hurdle or the penultimate hurdle, and the interviews... They're certainly not like your GCSE or A-level maths questions where they're kind of straightforward and routine. They get you to think, they get you to be creative. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just, you, you have to think a lot and you've got to just be a little bit smart and a little bit clever. And that's what distinguishes Oxbridge students from other students. Uh, at least that's what they're aimed to do. Uh, yeah, anyway, I won't talk too much about the interview, but again, if you want me to home in and talk a lot more in a lot more detail about the interview, let me know. Anyway, once you've done the interview, this is kind of like a story time. Uh, I hope you've got a cup of tea or something. Anyway, once you've done the interview, um, that will be sort of uh, during December, start of December. Then you have to go through Christmas and New Year's, not knowing whether you've made it or not. And then around the 10th of January, you will get an email or a letter saying whether you've made it or not. Fortunately for me, that was a letter, uh, an email saying, yep, I made it, which was an amazing feeling uh, to, to find out that you had made it into the University of Oxford. Um, you know, usually the people that apply to Oxford have that as their top choice uh, or the choice, the uni that they want to go to. So it's a great, great feeling. And that's kind of like the last or the penultimate step of the whole getting into Oxford. But you've probably done most of the hard work. The final step then is to sit your A-levels, which will be in June or so, May, June after that January. So five or months later or so. And you have to meet the grade requirements because uh, for, for me, at least, it was two A stars and an A. Uh, I don't know what it is now. I don't even know what the, how the A-levels work. You, is there a number system? Is there a grade system? I don't know. But you have to meet your certain grades. But generally, A-levels are a lot easier than preparing for MAT and STEP and things like that. STEP, by the way, is the math paper for Cambridge, different to MAT. Anyway, that's essentially the whole application process in getting in. And then provided you meet your A-level grades, you get your place, which is great. Um, now let me talk about what it's like to do maths once you're actually here. Okay, so you've got the A-level grades you need, and now you've got a place to study maths at the University of Oxford. But what happens next? 
So firstly, uh, Oxford is one of the few universities which is kind of divided up into different colleges, so it has the collegiate system. So each college is kind of like a mini university and each student is given a college or each student is part of a college. So my college is Christchurch and there are I think 31 colleges at Oxford. That, that seems like something I should know, but I don't know. It's about 30 or 31, something like that. But there are a bunch of different colleges across the university and some are in the city centre, some are far away from the city centre, some are near the maths department, some are far away from the maths department, some have certain facilities and others don't. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially what uh, colleges are. and you will do teaching kind of falls into two different categories. Firstly, it's kind of like general teaching, which will happen at the maths department. So this is basically your lectures. So every day, at least in your first year, you will go to the maths department and every day you will have two different lectures on two different modules, depending on what day it is. Go to, you'll go to the maths department in the morning and you'll sit and watch these two lectures in a massive lecture theatre with the 200 and whatever students, other students there are studying maths. There'll be a lecturer at the front with a massive whiteboard and they just talk through, talk you, talk you, la, 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 la. they'll talk maths at you for about an hour and on that particular topic and you can take notes, you can follow along the notes, you can print them off beforehand or read them uh, on your laptop or something. Um, and yeah, you can't really ask too many questions, uh, maybe not during the lecture certainly, maybe at the end if the lecturer has a few minutes, they might allow for questions or you can walk down and ask them or ask them at the end of the lecture or something like that or send them an email. But uh, it's kind of it's not like school where you can just kind of just put your hand up and say, uh, sir, I don't quite get that. You kind of just have to deal with it. And then afterwards, you can either talk to your course mates or email the lecturer or whatever and try and work out what you didn't understand. Now, once you've done like a week's worth of, say, probability lectures, you'll have to do a probability problem sheet. So this is a uh, essentially like a worksheet to do a homework in, in theory um, that you've got to do on your own time. And each sheet will take about eight hours. And in your first year, you'll have about five sheets to do a week. So you'll have to do your lectures, you'll have to do the problem sheets as well, which is about eight hours times five problem sheets. Obviously it varies from sheet to sheet, some are easier, some are harder, but that's what you have to do. And uh, that kind of applies not just to maths at Oxford, but almost any subject, or at least any sort of sciencey subject. And then for humanities, you have like essays and stuff. Uh, but yeah, you'll be given a problem sheet to do every week. And then once you've done that problem sheet, you submit it into your tutor. And now this is so, kind of where we trans translate from general teaching to more personal teaching. So you hand in that problem sheet to your tutor and your tutor will be someone who kind of works for your college. And then that co that tutor will mark your problem sheet. And then a couple of days later, you'll have a tutorial, which is basically like a very, very, very small class with just you and maybe one or two other students and the tutor. And you'll essentially work through the problem sheet together. So any problems you couldn't answer or any bits you like of maths you just couldn't wrap your head around, you can ask the tutor for help there, and that's like the perfect time to ask any questions that you may have had, anything that you didn't understand from the lectures. You ask there and then. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what distinguishes Oxford, and I guess Cambridge also have their supervisions, which are basically the same thing as what we call tutorials, uh, but that's what distinguishes Oxbridge from like other universities within the UK. You have these really, really dense, not dense students, but densely sort of concentrated learning happening in these tutorials and supervisions and whereas in other universities you'll have like 20 students and only one teacher so not as strong a ratio anyway that's kind of what tutorials are and that's kind of what how you know you'll get into a routine and that's how the first two terms will work you'll have five modules each term and five problem sheets a week uh, at least for your first year for the first two terms and it will sort of rinse and repeat you go to lectures you spend eight hours doing that problem sheet you submit it and you do that for eight week terms for the first two terms and then in your third term you have exams and these are what are called these are what are called these are what are called these are these are called prelims which is short for preliminary examinations i'm gonna have a sip of water and then i'll join you in just a sec okay so prelims kind of give me an as level vibes where they don't really count but they do matter sort of vibe in the sense that if you do really well that's great and it's a really good indicator of where you are and how well you've adapted to uni like uni in general, but also like the uni content and the different, the, how it differs from A level and that sort of stuff. But uh, it, you know, it doesn't really count towards your final degree or anything like that. You can get what's known as a scholar's gown, which basically means, I don't know if you've seen like the gowns, I'll probably leave a picture on screen, but everyone sort of wears a gown in Oxford, not all the time, uh, but if you've ever seen Harry Potter, I think they, they wear stuff like that. I don't know, I haven't really watched Harry Potter, sorry. Shut up, shut up. Uh, but, uh, 
you wear gowns at sort of uh, any sort of fancy event and that sort of stuff. But if you do really well in the exams, you get to wear a scholar's gown, which is like a really, really fancy bougie gown. Um, so I'll leave a photo of that here. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, what gowns are. And you can get things like that. So little perks and maybe your college might give you some money if you do really well. But at the end of the day, it doesn't count towards your final degree. And uh, your prelims are just kind of a good indicator, essentially. Uh, that being said, people do want to do really well on them, and understandably so. They're your first sort of major exams that you have at uni. Um, I guess you also have what are known as collections dotted throughout the year, and those are essentially just essentially just mock exams, um, which are, again are good sort of progress trackers. Uh, anyway, yeah, if you do really badly in your prelims, that will probably raise a few eyebrows and then people, you know, your tutors might have discussions with you about whether Oxford is really for you. But generally, it's not too, for 99% of students, it's, prelims aren't too much of a concern. You'll generally get like a 65, 70, around that sort of mark. 60 is a very, very good score. And if you can get 60, congratulations. If you don't get 60, don't worry. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what you want to aim for. And if you do that, sound, the year's done. And first year is fun, but then as soon as you hit second year for maths, that's when the exams start counting. Your second year counts towards 40% of your degree and your third year 60%. So in second year, you actually get some choices for options. So I didn't say this. In first year, you don't get any choices. All the modules are sort of already predetermined for you. You have to sit the 10 modules that have like been given to you and everyone has the same modules. But in second year, there's a little bit of choice. Most modules, or there are some core modules, but then after that you get choice. And then in third year, it's completely free choice. You get to choose essentially any combination of modules you want. And uh, yeah, second year is 40%. Second year works exactly the same as first year. You have your tutorials in college and uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, you only have one problem sheet every two weeks, but apart from that, it's pretty much the exact same. First and second term, then in third term, it's sort of revision and your exams. In third year, it slightly changes. You, as I said, have 100% uh, choice of your options, but you don't have tutorials anymore, sadly. You have classes now. So it's in groups of about 15 or so, 10, 15 students. And a similar sort of vibe, the tutor will go over that week's problem sheets or that fortnight's problem sheet and, yeah, give you the solutions. And you can ask any problem, uh, any questions that you had, uh, any questions that you have, any problems, any queries, that sort of stuff. Um, but, yeah, that happens once every fortnight and it's in classes now. So it's less sort of one-on-one. -on -one vibe and kind of more high school sixth form vibe nonetheless they're still really really informative and uh, yeah you do your first two terms and then third term which is what i'm about to enter it's the easter break now so the third term which is what i'm about to enter will be exams and uh yeah i'm a little bit scared but hey ho we'll see how they go fingers crossed for me that, that have exams and then most students stay on for a fourth year here and do kind of like an integrated undergraduate masters and uh, I won't talk too much about that because I'll be honest, I don't really know too much about it. You do modules, you choose them. Everyone has to do dissertation. Uh, it seems like good fun, but also very, very difficult. And it's you sort of stay on if you really enjoy math. But generally, if you're at Oxford doing maths, you really, really enjoy maths. Anyway, that's kind of a brief overview of maths at Oxford, how you get in here. And once you're in here, what it's like. I don't really know how I did. I kind of just think I was waffling at the camera. This is not something I normally do. It feels weird without having a whiteboard pen in my hand and a whiteboard in the background, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you want me to make more videos talking about particular parts of Oxford or maths or Christchurch or whatever it is. And if you have any questions, please, please, please do just leave them in the description, uh, not in the description, in the comments uh, down below. I will be more than happy to answer. Um, but yeah, if you have made it to the end of this video, I hope that means you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, please do consider liking and subscribing as well, especially if you are considering doing maths at uni, even if it's not at Oxford and even if it's at the, the other place, Cambridge. Uh, do consider subscribing because I make a ton of maths videos, um, one, one every other day, in fact, with my whiteboard. I'll go through a problem or a theorem. Um, so yeah, subscribe and watch them and like them and I'll be happy. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.